What's up guys, Gary to myself.dev. So today I'm gonna to talk about how I would become a developer if I had to start over from ground zero. If it was April um, April 17th, 2022, and I had no tech experience, I was just working at a job that I hated. And I was like, all right, I gotta get out of this job. I can't do this. Tech looks pretty cool. I like code, that's 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 nice. Um, and then the money's nice too. So um, this is like how I would go from job I hate to developer in 2022. So first things first, um, there's a lot of different career paths you can go down in the tech industry. I um, mean, you can be like a front end developer, back end developer, game developer, DevOps, um, all sorts of other stuff like Android developer, iOS. In my opinion, the and from what I've seen, the easiest way to get into the tech industry, like the path I would take is to go for a web developer job because with that, um, all you're gonna need is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And comparatively, those aren't super hard to learn. Um, I mean, compared to like Java or like C Sharp or .NET, stuff like that, I feel like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are way easier. So why not pick the easiest route? Um, and then also with HTML, CSS, or like front-end development, you can build a portfolio and say, like you can make it like very visually appealing um, and basically point employers to it and say, hey, look, I've built this stuff. I know what I'm doing. I'm a safe bet. You can hire me. I'd probably pick front end developer um, as the one I'd go with. Because the first time I started to learn code, I started, I was like, oh, I like Python. This is cool. I want to be a Python developer. But that's like very ambiguous. Like it's like you have a marketing degree. Like there's a lot you can do with a marketing degree or there, there's a lot you can do with Python. You kind of need to narrow down your search area so you can have a particular thing to focus on. And with the goal of becoming a front-end developer, there's like very specific stuff you can learn and focus on to get to that goal. So first thing is pick which area you wanna go into. Um, like I've been saying, obviously I'd recommend front-end development. And once you get a job as a front-end developer, um, get some experience, you can pivot to another job if you want to. That's just what I see as the easiest one to break into. Now, how do you actually start learning code? Well. Let's see, there's a site called freecodecamp.org. As the name implies, it is free. This is probably the best, or this is probably the place I'd start for sure. Um, Cause one, you wanna make sure you like code and that like this is something you think you can do as a long-term job. You don't wanna get into this just for the money cause as a developer, you are always gonna have to learn and improve. This isn't a job where it's just like, all right, cool, you have your degree, you never have to learn again. Cause tech is always improving and evolving. Um, I'm sure like a lot of other career fields are like that, but you don't get to just like say, hey, I know this, I'm good, I can stop learning now. Otherwise. One day you might lose your job or your company might go out of business on what happens. You're just unemployed again. Um, and technology or the tech industry has moved so far ahead that you don't know the current technology, like the current modern stack. And you can't get a job without like basically starting over, not from ground zero, but like pretty close to it. So you gotta be ready for that. But yeah, I'd go to Free Code Camp um, to make sure you like code. Because like I said, it is free. Uh, if we go to the curriculum here, they've got this massive curriculum. You don't need to go through all of this. Um, they have responsive web design beta certificate and then a responsive web design certification. I guess this is just like the new and improved one maybe, but I'd probably start with this web uh, responsive web design certificate. They say it's 300 hours. I think that's what they were saying like four years ago when I did free code camp and it, I don't think it takes that long or anywhere near it um, as long as you like focus. If you're like distracted and you like do one lesson and you just sit on Instagram for like five minutes and then go back and that would probably increase your time a lot. And it brings us to an important point. You need to like, let's say you're at a job you hate. Um, you need to use that negative emotional leverage. Like if you, like you go into work and you feel like a piece of your soul dies every day, then when you get home, you're gonna be tired. You're gonna be like, I just wanna lay down and watch Netflix, play video games. Don't do that. Just think about, hey, look, if I don't study, I'm gonna be at my job longer. And you have to use that emotional um, leverage to push yourself to study. Because there's gonna be times where you don't wanna do this and you need to be consistent. That's probably another one of the huge keys is consistency. A lot of people that I've talked to, they'll start trying to learn to code and maybe they'll do it for like a month or two and then they'll stop. And then a few months later, they're like, ah, why did I stop? That was a lot of fun, I like that. I wanna become a developer and they'll get back into it. But you, after a few months, you've probably forgotten like 90% of what you learned in that first month or two. So you wanna make sure you're consistent. Um, that is a huge thing. The more you can study per day, the better but I'd pick consistency over quantity of time study. Like don't just study like 20 hours one day and then don't study any other day the rest of the week. Um, if you can try to go for like one, two, three, four, five hours a day, something like that. But go through their HTML basics course here. Um, this is gonna teach you the basics of HTML, CSS. And then down here, we get the responsive design projects. So this is an important part. Make sure you do these projects at the end because this is what you're gonna start putting on your portfolio. The designs they give you for these aren't the best 
Where's the demo? Do they not have the demo on this anymore? There we go. This one, huh? Yeah, the designs for these aren't the best, but hey, they're basically like pages you could put on your portfolio. Um, I'd say after you build them, go back through the projects and try to improve them on, like make them look better on your own. Because when employers or when potential employers are looking at your portfolio, they're going to try to just look at the code, but having good looking projects impacts their perception as well. It's kind of like if you go into a job interview um, and you're like a five star candidate, like with the knowledge wise, um, going in wearing like a nice suit is going to affect their perception of you and improve your chances of getting hired versus if you just go in wearing like shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, you want to look professional. That's going to give off a better uh, first impression, just like better projects would give off a better first impression. So do these projects. Um, like I said, they're free. So the design's not great. You get what you pay for, but they're good first projects to learn and practice. So you've gone through the CSS response or the, the free code camps responsive web design certificate. You've built these projects. Do you build a portfolio in here? Yeah. Personalized portfolio web page. Sweet. So the last project you do is build a portfolio um, and you'll stick all, all of those other four projects you've built on here. So you'll have something like this. You'll have your uh, portfolio projects. And I'd say the portfolio is probably one of the biggest things you want to get to. This is probably one of the keys of what you need to start applying because once you have this, this is like what you can point to and say, hey, I know how to do this. I've built these projects. You can hire me. The design on this one's not too great either, in my opinion, but yeah, it's a start. Um, it'll let you start applying for jobs. So you've gone through free CodeCamp's front end, uh, a responsive web design certificate. You got your portfolio, make your resume. Uh, if you need a good resume template for a resume with no technical experience, um, go to self-taught-dev.com slash resume dash template. I'll have a link to that in the description and you can get the template I used when I was first applying to dev jobs before I had any tech experience when I just had the projects. Um, so that will hopefully help you get your resume started. Uh, just replace the projects that are on there with the ones that you've built on here and you should be good to go and maybe start applying to just like five or 10 jobs a day, depending on where you live. Another thing is be willing to move for the job. Like let's say you live in a small town and there's not a lot of tech jobs available in that town. And you're like, I want a remote job. Well, your first tech job is probably not gonna be a remote one. The work environment is moving more towards remote work, but as a um, like a new developer, especially starting out, I'd probably try to shoot for a, an, an office job to begin with because you're gonna be around other developers. It's gonna be a lot easier to ask questions and that's gonna help you out a lot in your first job as well. Um, remote work's awesome, but I'd probably try to look at that as like your second job or third or fourth, because you want to be able to just go up to one of the other devs on your team and say, hey man, can you come up here? I'm trying to figure this out. I'm, I'm stuck on it. I just want to see if you can give me any troubleshooting ideas that might help me break past this roadblock. And also remote jobs are going to be more competitive, so it's going to be harder to get a remote job too. Um, just try to go, I'd recommend trying to go for an in-office job for your first developer job. All right, sweet. So we've got free code camp done. We've got our portfolio. We've got a resume because um, hopefully you got my template and filled that out. What do you do next? Well, now we want to focus on building cooler, bigger and better projects. So where do we get more projects? There's a few different sites that I would recommend. Odin Project. Is it the Odin Project? Yeah, uh, this is another great place to start learning web development. I click on view full curriculum. Um, Let's go to the full stack JavaScript, intermediate HTML and CSS. So I'd probably go through this course here. Again, you're probably gonna cover a lot of what you learn at Free Code Camp again, but that's great because when you learn stuff from Free Code Camp, you've got like one layer um, and the knowledge is raining down. And let's say there's gonna be holes in your memory, right? So some of that knowledge is gonna slip through, you're gonna forget about it. Doing another course on HTML and CSS is gonna add another layer and help you catch more of that knowledge and just like improve your knowledge base so you it's just going to drill this down into your head better. And plus there's going to be stuff that the Odin project covers that free code camp didn't, um, or stuff that they explain better, like concepts that you didn't quite understand. They're going to explain better. So I'd go through to their intermediate HTML concepts, intermediate CSS concepts, um, the grid. And then I think that completes their HTML, their intermediate HTML course. Cool. And then they've got some projects for you to do as well. So that is, Great. How do their projects look? Let's take a look at this. Is there a, there's a design file. Yeah. So their project looks way better than the free code camp ones in my opinion, but it's kind of going to be up to you. Um, on your portfolio, I 
maybe put like 10 projects, you're like 10 best projects. So you've only got like four from free code camp. So you could put all of these projects on there. Um, and we'll just keep adding projects till we get to 10. And then we'll start switching out the bad projects for better projects that we've built, right? Now we know HTML, CSS, um, we've gone through two courses on it. We've got our portfolio, we've got our resume. We don't know JavaScript yet though. So let's go back to free code camp curriculum. And we would go through the JavaScript algorithms and data structures certificate here, because we want to start learning JavaScript. That's another key component of getting a job as a front end developer. You can get a job as a front end developer with just HTML and CSS. But it, again, it goes back to the maximizing the probability that the likelihood of what you want will occur. And knowing HTML and CSS, maybe that puts you at like 10% chance of getting a job. Knowing JavaScript is probably going to add another 10% because it's very important in making your websites interactive and functional. So we'll go through and do um, free code camps, JavaScript curriculum, basic data structures, algorithm scripting, object oriented programming, all sorts of different fun stuff here. Um, data structure projects. Yeah, so there are some projects here. Is this purely functional or is this have some like GUI that they can interact with? Uh, these look like they're just purely functional projects. So I might try to make, I try to turn these into like projects with the user interface. Um, so a palindrome checker basically takes a string and it checks if the string is the same forward and backwards, right? Yeah, like race car. Race car is the same forward and backwards. Um, I'd probably put in like a text input and be like, hey, type in a word and we'll check and make sure this is a palindrome. Um, and that would add like a front end. Well, maybe that's not the right word. That would add more of a, like an interactivity or make it easier for the user to interact with your project. And just going above and beyond and like improving these projects is going to help a lot with getting a job. Like you want to make your projects as impressive as possible. You want to make them say, dang, they built that and they, they taught themselves how to code. That's, that's crazy. I'm impressed. I like him. I want to bring him in for an interview or her. So you did free code camps, uh, JavaScript curriculum. Then you go back to the Odin project, do the Odin projects, JavaScript curriculum. Um, and then apparently if you got, they've got advanced HTML and CSS, go through that too. Um, then you can get on to the more in-depth JavaScript stuff like Node.js. Node is basically just JavaScript, but it's run on a server versus in the browser. And then do I'd probably do their getting hired thing as well. Uh, looks like they have you build a portfolio here, um, and then they got you building your resume, but you've already got a resume and portfolio because we built that already. And again, remember this whole time after you get past free code camps, responsive web design certificate, and you've got a portfolio built with a few projects on it, make sure you're applying, make sure you get that resume filled out and you're sending out like five, 10 applications a day. Maybe that takes like an hour. So I'd like include that in your study time. And honestly, like the farther along this path you get, the more time I would spend uh, applying to jobs. Cause it's kind of like, if we had a graph of like the more knowledge you have and the time you spend applying, the more knowledge you have, the more worth it it's going to be to apply more because your chance of getting a job is going to be higher. So we've gone through free code camp. We've done the Odin project. Um, where do you go from here? Well, you've got a decent portfolio. You've got your resume. We, you, like I said, you want to keep building better, cooler, bigger projects. So if you've got anything you want to build on your own, you like any ideas, I definitely build that. Or like if any family members are like, Hey, I want a, I'm, if your mom's like a photographer and you want to build her a site, try to do that. Cause that's going to be a cool thing you can point to. You can like say that's a freelance project you did for your mom. But if she's got a business, it's like it's called mom's photography or something like that. You could say you did, um, you rebuilt mom's photography's website and put that as like a job experience on your resume. From there, like I said, you just want to keep building cooler, bigger, better stuff. Uh, if you need more projects, go to self-taught-dev.com. It's a, something I built because um, one of the biggest challenges I had when I was trying to become a developer was like, what projects do I build? What bigger, cooler, better stuff do I build? Um, and this is just a collection of projects that I built that you can practice. I'm gonna be real rebuilding the site soon um, and making all the projects free. So hopefully I can get that done soon, but that's the thing you can check out. Um, and then from there, other tips, what else can you start doing? You want to improve your interview skills, definitely. So I don't know if he still does interview stuff. What's his name? Ramit Sethi. Um, he wrote, I will teach you to be rich, it's a great book. But if you just Google him and interview tips, he's got some great interview tips and some great videos on preparing and answering interview questions. I'd make you make sure you spend some time like working on how to interview better. 
Like I got pretty good at that. And the two places that I ended up getting interviews at, I got offers at both of them. One was just an internship, um, but the other one was a full-time job. So make sure you get your interview skills down as well. Other stuff you can do to help get a job, make a uh, YouTube channel. That would be cool. I think that was a big reason I got my first developer job. Like they thought it was cool that I had a YouTube channel. And that's one of the reasons they brought me in for an interview. Uh, but that helps market yourself and like let the kind of lets them know a little bit about yourself before they bring you in for an interview because they can like watch your videos and see like what you're like. Um, make sure you're like a good culture fit. Mm, what else could you do if you live in a like if you live in a decent sized city? Go to meetup.com and look on Facebook groups and try to find like React or JavaScript or front end developer meetups that you can go to. Just like any kind of tech meetup, even if it's not related to like front end developer, if it's like a back end developer meetup or like game development. Um, or even just like crypto or something like that, crypto development, check those out because there might be people there you can meet that'll help you get a job. And then just going out and talking to people can help improve your social skills too. Cause like there's the stereotype, like developers are like have crappy social skills and all that stuff, right? So you, you wanna work on that too. And even if you're like socially anxious and you're like, I'm antisocial, I don't like to go out and talk to people. Well, you gotta suck it up and do it because that's gonna help you get a job. And also having good social skills and good communication skills is what's gonna help you level up as a developer once you're in like a big company, like going from like um, entry level to mid to like senior developer, like being a senior developer, being able to explain your code to other people that and like communicate effectively, that's a big part of being a senior developer. So you wanna start working on those skills too. Um, and then from there, if you have any other questions or anything like that, like I've got a Discord and a, we took over the self-taught dev subreddit. So if you have questions or if you need more guidance after you get to that point, feel free to come hop in Discord um, or come hop in the Reddit. And I have links to both of those in the description as well. But feel free to come hop in there, ask questions to me and my admin and the other developers that are in there. And we're happy to help you out, provide guidance. The developer community is very helpful and like they want you, like other people want you to succeed as long as you're asking in the right way. As long as you're coming from like a good place and you're not just being lazy and you're like, my code doesn't work, somebody fix this for me. Uh, people are happy to help you out. So I think that's about it for this one. Uh, if you liked this video, if this helps you out at all, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on the great content I'm putting out. Um, come hop in Discord. If you just wanna talk to me or any of the other people in there um, and just say, hey, get more guidance, anything like that. Or feel free to post down in the comments below if that um, if you wanna ask your question there, I try to respond to those as much as I can as well. But I think that's about it. So I will catch you guys next time. Peace. Round one.